Hello, I am Miresh. Today I will explain how to use agentic LLM with reinforcement learning. These days, people shifted a lot of applications from traditional vanilla LLM to agentic LLM. The reason is the traditional LLM is very good in answering simple questions. Like suppose we ask question like uh, what will be the weather today? But agentic LLM is very good in doing more complex tasks. For example, suppose I say that please plan a trip to a particular city. Then in that case, agentic LLM will ask some questions, identify what is your suitable time to go, what is your suitable returning time, when you will, uh, how you want to stay, what kind of food you will prefer, uh, what will be the weather, means it will give, it will complete package of tasks, multiple tasks. Thus, uh, it is more useful in the current complex scenarios. Now, people started using reinforcement learning with agentic LLM so that after multiple set of experiences, the system performance will improve and it will make uh, less error, it will show better performance like that. If you go through the literature survey, you will find that there are a huge number of different different varieties of agentic LLMs concepts. I have just uh, collected a few such kind of uh, techniques. So some of them are like uh, LLM tool, user agents, chain of thought planners, multi-agent LLM systems, LLM plus RL agents. So, but in this tutorial, I have just combined these two, like multi-agent LLM systems and LLM plus RL agents to develop a very simple, but uh, I feel an effective healthcare related uh, applications. So, as the name suggests, multi-agent LLM system represents like a system having multiple where multiple LLMs are interacting, collaborating or competing to solve the problems. And LLM plus RL, LLMs that learns from the trial and error, reward signals and then optimizing the decisions over time. So these are the key facts. Now let us uh, go into more detail about LLM plus RL agents because this is a part of our uh, system. So generally we start uh, with our basic uh, environmental setup, variable setup, agent setup and after that uh, we apply some user queries. Then LLM generates the possible actions or strategies based on the user queries. Then reinforcement learning agent select those actions and uh, based on the policies that they have. and uh, those actions is taken uh, towards the environment and uh, after applying those actions, the system gets uh, some rewards or feedback. So based on the rewards and feedback, the reinforcement learning agents generally updates the policy and this cycle continues and, uh, and with the time the system gets more maturity. So this is the uh, general concept behind LLM plus reinforcement learning agents. So as the name suggests, it contains two things that uh, powerful language models and reinforcement learning. Uh, Multi-agent LLM systems, as the name suggests, it contains multiple agents. So there are two possibilities. First, all agents will belong to a separate language models. Second possibility is all LLM agents all independent LLM agents will belong to a single large language model, but we will use prompt engineering or few sort prompting to design agent which will be dedicated to perform a particular type of task, subtask or so expertise on a particular thing. So for example, here we have an agent. So there will be n different types of tasks they can perform. 
Now, once uh, we provide the input query to LLM agents, it generates the outputs. The next part is we have to organize all those outputs. So for that, we use some coordinator or aggregator. This coordinator or aggregator depends upon the functionality requirements of your task. And finally, it generates the final output or response. So these are the two important things. Now we will see that when we combine, how the system will look like. So we will start. Then we feed the input to agentic LLM system. So agentic LLM system will give that uh, input to multiple agents. It will generate uh, multiple different different actions. An aggregator will combine those actions and then pass through the environment. There we, the system will get feedback. The feedback will go to the reinforcement learning agents. Agents will decide that based on the reward or output, uh, it will decide whether to update the system or not. And then it will continue the cycle. So this is the process. So now we are using the same concept to develop an ideal scenario of virtual healthcare provider. So in this scenario, the background is like you are going to a virtual healthcare center. There you have a facility to discuss with multiple experts like uh, internal medicine experts, general physician experts, a specialist experts so that uh, at the end we can get more broader opinion about the disease and finally the reinforcement learning system will update if there are any issues in decision making by all three systems so based on that it generally helps in maturing the overall healthcare, virtual healthcare system. So let us see that how the system is designed here and after that I will go through the code. So first of all we start then reset the environment and then get the patient case. Now we have LLM advisor recommend. So what is LLM advisor recommend? It actually contains three agents with negotiation and division means each of those three agents, three type of doctors generally negotiate with each other and based on the other's decisions, it revises their decisions. So these are the, at first phase, such kind of facilities we are providing. And after that, it embeds the recommendation. So embed recommendations mean it uses the sentence transformer to get the numerical vector, uh, numerical advice vectors. So for in final advice and for uh, means class, they got numerical vectors. Then next thing is like a policy network with attention. So what is policy network with attention? It combines the patient state plus advisor embeddings and attend to the most influential advisors and select the action. So this is very important. So once it selects the actions, we apply apply actions to environment. Again, what is apply actions to environment? It takes the selected medical actions to a proper application to in a general application. After that, another functions are coming like get reward and done. This means get reward and episode completion info. This means that uh, you have uh, diagnosed the healthcare situation correctly. So the situation ends like you can update the policy gradient, you can log and plot the rewards, so and so. But if it is no, then you can again go to the LLM advisors recommendation. So at this phase. So this is the entire process. It will continue and then the continuous process will help in learning a lot of things like a policy gradient decision system, 
and then policy network attention system. So this systems actually learn some weight so that in future if you get some new data, it will give some effective decisions. Code is given here. Just for simplicity and whatever available in free, I just tried. So uh, we use the Lama 3 70 billion model. And number of episodes are 10. Like uh, we think that uh, 10 number of patients are we are getting. And embedding dimension is 32. Number of advisors are 3. So we are taking 3 type of virtual doctors. Yeah, here number of actions are 5. This means we are taking 5 different different actions based on the observations. And the constant gamma is 0 0.99. So patient cases, you can see that we have prepared a very toy type of data set, blue cold type of data. And uh, these are some binary variables. And then we select the samples by using some random choice. And after that, uh, we just use the Grok LLM API adapter to file all the queries. So we have uh, three type of personalities in, or virtual experts like internist. Internist means internal medicine expert. A specialist means uh, domain expert. And generalist means uh, general physician. So same case goes to three different type of doctors. And after that, uh, it generally results uh, final advice. After that, uh, we have another scenarios that I discussed like uh, negotiations, and uh, corrections based on others uh, advice so this function is dedicated for that only next part is patient environment so as i said uh, we have made total five different types of environment so it is like uh, given in like what kind of uh, actions we can take in what kind of situation so five different environments we have implemented now we are uh, checking the different different kind of patient environment status. For example, fever, cough and risk. So we have three status, fever, cough and risk. So based on the status of fever, cough and risk, uh, we are just uh, calculating the status. And these status are like uh, if action is equal to zero, reward minus two, or else if action equal to 1, then we can say that a true diagnosis is cold, reward is equal to 10, and then equal to true. So this way we set some of the initial parameters. And after that, uh, we are applying some sentence embedding to convert the entire data into sentence vector. And after that, we are preparing the policy network. So our policy network is a very simple deep learning architecture which actually learns the attention weight like weight of the different different type of policies that you are getting and after that we start the training and the policy gradients so policy gradients trainings are working like uh, we have discussed here like how the our policy gradients trainings are actually working so we start and then collect the trajectory state action reward and then compute the discounted returns for each step then we normalize the returns then for each step we calculate the log probability of action taken and then compute the policy loss plus log probability into return means uh, then we compute the policy loss that is log probability into return next uh, we apply the back propagation gradients and after that we update the policy network and then it continues for some rounds so this way we update our policy networks. Uh, this is the policy loss related information, how we calculated the policy loss related information. So based on the, these values, system is learning the complete policy gradients and uh, policy related parameters. Now you can show that I have uh, just after printing, we try to get the reward history, episodes, rewards. So all those things I we just printed to show that how the rewards and penalties are. Finally, we had applied a plotting also to check the flow of reward in the system.
so when you run this code you will get the similar type of results for example i had run so for episode 0 episode 0 means first epoch the patient detail where that, that is randomly selected and passed that is given in the code fever is equal to 1.0 cough is equal to risk equal to 0, 0.0 the true diagnosis is called so advisor 1 you can see that advisor 1 says that i recommend ordering the complete blood count cbc and blood culture rule out of any underlying bacterial infections and initiating the anti antipyretic therapy to manage the fever while also scheduling the telemedicine or in-person consultation with the healthcare provider to future evaluate. Second advisor say that uh, considering the patient's fever and lack of cough and risk factors and I recommend ordering the complete blood count CBC and blood culture to rule out any underlying bacterial infections. Third advisor says that I recommend scheduling a telemedicine or in-person consultations with the healthcare provider to further evaluate and manage the fever as we as well as rule out any underlying conditions that may require immediate attention and uh, they had uh, diagnosed flu and uh, based on that uh, they got reward equal to minus 10 and here they found that advisor 2 is the most influential so based on that uh, the system learns and once the system training is complete you can use it as a more mature and uh, less uh, hallucinating systems so thanks for watching i will share this code it is a working code and give the link in the description box